A desperate, deafening scream roamed through the dense and nearly blinding darkness, followed by faint laughter. She hesitated to take the next few steps as she walked through the dimly lit city streets which at these gruesome hours past midnight had relinquished all pretense of civilization to the anarchy of the dingy, icy night. In this realm there were no visible people as the night eclipsed their humanity. Here there were only promises of people, threats of people, and in the most unfortunate cases, memories of people. The darkest corners traded human-shaped shadows which darted freely at the edges of her vision but which expertly avoided being seen directly. The scream and laughter sounded somewhat familiar but they invited terror to her heart. She ignored the invitation and focused on her mission. Finding him in this vast maze of debris and broken lives seemed impossible. After only a few minutes the cold became almost unbearable, but knowing that he couldn't survive long in this kind of weather motivated her even more. In her childhood, he took her on a carousel of wonder. He fed her a diet of sunshine and love, piggyback rides, trips to museums and aquariums, games, life lessons like candy for the soul, bits of scattered academic education like mini meals for the mind. He was the soft ground when she tripped and fell and the ladder she climbed to attain new heights. He'd anticipate her pain and even before it was needed, he would become the band-aid for her scraped knee. He taught her the importance and power of empathy. He said empathy was hearing another person's heart beat in your chest. It was recognizing your own voice echoing in the night of someone's spirit. When done perfectly, it is the gateway to the grand balcony which oversees the universe of emotion, a top from which one observes that emotional states are common spaces shared by many, and these states are often experienced by the observer in the past, present, and future. It's a living mirror that lets you peer at yourself from outside of yourself. Deeming it necessary for the flourishing of everything from a large society, all the way down to a relationship consisting of only two people, and even for the relationship one has with themselves, he placed it on a pedestal as the highest of all social virtues. Now that she was an adult, he himself had become much older. He walked with a limp, and age had robbed him of clear vision and his once brilliant black hair, replacing it with sparse white strands. Sadly, it also robbed him of basic sanity, causing him to sometimes wander. This behavior is what led her on this mission. He had wandered away from home further than his senses had wandered from him, and he was now aimlessly walking the streets in clothing more fitting for the beach than the bitter winter that weighed down on him. Shivering just as he must have been shivering now, and still no closer to finding him, she looked up as if to ask heaven for help. The sky was a nearly starless sea of black that echoed the coldness of the night. There were only two stars, and one was very faint. He loved the stars and she thought about how he once told her about how they could be used for navigation, but it was clear they wouldn't be useful tonight. Another method would be necessary. The thought of walking aimlessly injected a sense of hopelessness in her and she pondered if he'd felt the same way at this very moment. The cold nibbled more steadily on one foot than the other and she soon began to limp, though still not discouraged. A flurry of snowflakes then began descending, making the poor visibility even worse. The thick flakes accumulated on her quickly. Even her eyebrows and lashes turned white. Disoriented, limping, having poor vision, and having lashes and brows painted white by the snow, in her effort and journey to find him, she began a metamorphosis, and started to look and feel much like the person she sought. Her condition drove her to rest on a nearby bench. Equipped with just a bag stuffed with a blanket he'd given her as a present, she opened the bag and partially pulled out the blanket. Snow immediately covered it and she looked up as if to register a complaint with the sky. Instead of two stars like earlier, there was now only one, the faint one seemed to have been swallowed up by the darkness. She contemplated the possibility of him shifting from a vibrant person into merely a memory. A tear peeked out of her eye, where gravity and the cold temperature competed to see who could claim it first. Suddenly, the sound of creaking scratched her ears. The bench she sat on shared its back with another bench which faced the opposite direction behind her. About a minute after she sat down, the man she'd been looking for sprung up on the other bench, transitioning from a lying position to sitting up. Startled, she jumped up and tossed the blanket towards him and let out a desperate and deafening scream, exactly as she'd heard earlier. 
she hadn't recognized him buried under layers of snow and darkness even as he sat up and turned towards her, until he let out a brief chuckle, causing a mini avalanche on his face. She responded with a laugh of her own. She took his hand, pulled him up from the bench, and led him back towards the path from where she came. Halfway on the journey, the snowfall stopped, thereby ending the game he played of catching snowflakes with his tongue, the kind of game she played as a child. He stopped and looked for more snowflakes from the sky and when she noticed, she too looked into the sky. Again, there was only the one star, but what she didn't notice before is that it was brighter, as if the faint one hadn't disappeared into the darkness but had rather merged with the other, forming a single star.